Well, greetings, Ben, and welcome to another episode of our WCN Fluencer Podcast. It is great to visit with you today. It's great to be here. I really appreciate the invite. You know, I, I, I'm very lucky that I get the opportunity to visit with folks, uh, goodness, all over the country that are innovators, influencers. And when we met just a couple of weeks ago, I said, I need to know more about Joe and Bella. So this is this is our opportunity to really dig deep into not only your why, but these terrific products that uh, that Joe and Bella has developed. So welcome. Thanks. And I'm absolutely excited to uh, talk about all things Joe and Bella. Ah, so tell me tell me about this adaptive clothing. I mean, it's something that I know is important, but something that I don't know anything about. And I would imagine our listeners would want to know. You know, it's interesting. I didn't know about adaptive clothing um, until I really needed to know about it for my grandmother. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that's typical for a lot of things when it comes to caregiving. Uh, you know, we're not really studying up on caregiving products unless uh, uh, you needed that. <laughs> uh, unless you're in the middle of a crisis. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And in one sense, that's kind of what happened with us. Um, my grandparents were living in a memory care community. Um, my grandfather passed about um, seven, eight years ago. So my grandmother was alone uh, at, at this time, uh, super sharp. Uh, my grandfather had Parkinson's and dementia. Um, so my grandmother moved in with him uh, and had major mobility issues. Um, she was in a wheelchair for most of the day. Um, had, had, had issues with her shoulders and elbows and, um, and really didn't like working on improving her movement. Uh, and so she started kind of physically declining, um, a little quick. And, um, when the pandemic hit, um, you know, like so many people who had loved ones in care communities, we lost, um, that connection, that physical connection right. with her. You know, we, we couldn't physically go and see her and, um, we also struggled to communicate with her in a, many other ways. Uh, the professional caregivers helped us, um, talk to her on the phone. You know, my grandma had her own phone, uh, but it, around this time, she really struggled to talk on the phone. Uh, caregivers mm -hmm. tried to set up a FaceTime and that didn't work. We tried drive-bys and that didn't work. And it was a weird time for our family. Uh, my father, as it was probably for everybody in this country. Um, but you know, my father and, and his dog had visited my grandmother every single day, um, since she moved in. And so that first day, and then it you know, became weeks after of not being there with her emotionally was a challenge. Uh, but we learned practically it was a challenge too. Uh, you know, as a family caregiver, we wanted to make sure she was comfortable and taken care of and had everything she needed. And, um, we, um, didn't know what she needed. And, you know, there was only so much, mm -hmm. you know, we could kind of pry out of those professional caregivers who at this point were short staffed uh, and, and pre vaccine times, literally risking their lives every day to go there. So the last thing we wanted to do was bug them anymore. And so what we did was we put a little um, tablet, video tablet in her room that we could essentially drop in on, see how life was for her. And we saw one of these moments, um, it was just a coincidental moment when our whole family was together and we, let's, let's see what grandma's doing. And we were watching a professional caregiver who uh, was putting a cardigan on her. And, you know, my grandmother was sitting in a wheelchair and uh, it was the first time I ever heard her swear. Uh, she dropped a big old F-bomb. <laughs> I didn't even know she an, knew that An F-bomb. It was, oh a, it was, you know, a moment where our whole family were, were kind of shocked at what we were seeing and, and hearing. And uh, she did it because she was in a lot of pain, getting that cardigan on. Right. And it's a cardigan, you know, that's stretchy material, it's oversized. And that caregiver was trying so carefully just to drape it around her shoulders and get her second arm in. Uh, and it was horribly painful for her. Uh, it, you know, we felt terrible, not just for my grandmother, but, but that caregiver who was, um, trying so hard to, to not make this a difficult process. And we realized that this is something they have to do at least twice a day, every day. And we were watching mm -hmm. the easiest garment of her, you know, of her dressing experience to be put on. So couldn't imagine how um, 
challenging that is for a daily routine to go through that much pain multiple times a day, the indignity of it, the time it took mm-hmm. to do this. So what we did, you know, we, we hung up the phone, we're like, all right, we got to figure something out here. This isn't working. And Googled things like clothes for old people, uh, clothes for people <laughs> in wheelchairs, clothes for memory care. And we finally stumbled upon this word called adaptive clothing, which we didn't know about. And so we found clothes that are called adaptive, which meant that they were modified in some sort of way to make dressing easier. Uh, we re- realized right away we actually did know what these clothes were, just not the term. I had shoulder surgery a couple of years earlier and went on Etsy and bought a tank top that had some Velcro around one of the straps so I can just undo it without moving my ah, arm. And you know that, yeah. that saved me from having to live in a robe essentially uh, for like two, three weeks there. Um, but I didn't know what it was called. I just called it, I think, shoulder surgery shirt. Uh, I think it's what it was described sure. on Etsy. <laughs> right. So anyway, so we found a bunch of clothes for my grandma um, that had openings and ways that would make it easier for her to put on. Sent her a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, cool, pro- problem solved. What, what, what's what's uh, next on the list here? And uh, you know, we checked in when we saw the package arrive. Uh, checked in on that tablet and we're like, Exciting to see that she's going to be wearing uh, all these new clothes and she's not wearing any of it. And so we're, you know, talking to her through this tablet and, and we're asking my grandma, like, what's up? Why, why aren't you wearing any of these new clothes? And she just looked at us and went, they're all too ugly. And they were. <laughs> we hoped that she wouldn't have thought so. Um, some of them were cheaply made. Uh, they, you can tell they, they weren't the type of clothes she has worn her whole life. And for her, um, that was more important to be able to wear the clothes that she felt comfortable wearing, uh, that <laughs> had her look how she wanted to look. That was more important than getting clothes that were less painful. She would rather endure that pain and be able to look how she wanted to look. And um, it was heartbreaking in a way. You know, that she's willing to put up with that kind of pain, um, you know, for this kind of end goal to be able to identify and and look look a certain way. And so we looked for more clothes uh, that would be less ugly for her. Tried some others, sent some more, didn't work. And this was really where the idea of Joe and Bella came from. We wanted to make clothes that are functional, that work right for aging bodies, uh, for people that are living with changes related to incontinence or mobility or cognition, but also look like the clothes they've been wearing their whole lives and the clothes they want to continue wearing. Um, and so um, in the past year, Joe and Bella has been around for about a year, year and a half. Um, we first did a much deeper dig a- around the country to find some adaptive clothes that do exist that are good looking. So uh, up on our site right Mm -hmm. now um, are some clothes from other brands um, that we think are pretty good. Uh, There's some great shoes and slippers, uh, some adaptive undergarments that really do make dressing easier and simpler. And that gave us um, some time to develop our own product. And so um, one of the most popular uh, clothing items that was on our site originally is a pair of adaptive pants called care zips. Uh, care zips were right. invented by a woman outside of Georgia named Molly Dye, uh, who was uh, caring for her mother who had dementia. Um, mm-hmm. She one day saw a caregiver um, change her mother's adult briefs and pants um, while her mother was lying on a bed and really kind of had to be pushed and rolled over because her mother couldn't help getting her dressed. And she was shocked at how undignified and miserable that looked. And that led her on her journey to to create CareZips. CareZips sold out on our site, sold out nationally. And we have now been working with Molly uh, to redesign, update, upgrade CareZips really for a new era. So CareZips by Joe and Bella is our first product. Uh, that is now live on our site uh, for sale. It's available there in some three awesome colors at joeandbella.com. We found a great design team to help us 
update and upgrade these and um yeah and i don't say fortunately because it's it's not a fortunately but it, it, it's a co nice coincidence that the lead designer uh is currently caring for her grandmother who has dementia and alzheimer's so this has become a passion it project a big difference these three it does make a difference it really yeah. does yeah. and she's also yeah. really talented uh which which is also fantastic she actually is the um was the lead designer for the initial product launch at lululemon uh, as well as the hospital scrubs brand figs. Um, so if you know any sort of cool doctors and nurses, it's, they're probably wearing figs. Um, and uh, we've now um, uh, used a new fabric. Uh, it's much more breathable. Uh, it's much more fashionable. Uh, it's uh, fixed the fit. So it's a much more kind of tapered fit down the leg. Um, Carezips okay. has three zippers to it. Uh, two of the zippers on the outside, they go from the hip to around the knee. Uh, it's got a snap. Uh, it's really easy to use at the hip. Uh, and the zipper's got a very long pull tab uh, that's easy to grab. And then the third zipper is internal that goes from the inside of a knee, you know, up through uh, uh, the crotch area to the inside of the other knee. And so that uh, makes it easier to fully open uh, the pants. Yes. It also gives you quick, easy access. That is ingenious. That is ingenious. It yeah. is. And, you know, Molly with the original care zips came up with that third zipper and actually even got a patent on it. Uh, so as of now, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're the only pair of pants out there with that third zipper, uh, which also makes it unique. Um, but what's really cool about these pants are, you know, if you take the three zippers away, it, it looks like something you can go grab at, at a Lululemon, um, at a Chico's. Uh, they look just like a really nice pair of pair of comfortable pants um, that just happen to have a few adaptations to them to make dressing easier. Um, so they're really perfect for anybody that you know spends time in a wheelchair that uses incontinence products, needs help toileting, uh, that needs help getting dressed. And uh, we're coming out in a month or two. Uh, with a Carezips Lux version that's going to have some extra features, some extra pockets, an upgraded pair of fa uh, upgraded fabric, uh, and then we have mm -hmm. six other products that'll be coming out by the end of the year: uh, chinos for men and women, a button down and a polo for guys, and then a cardigan uh, and a blouse for women. So that's really kind of our journey, where we've come from, and where we're going. Um, and, you know, for us, it was, um, you know, something that started as, a, you know, making life easier for our grandmother and somehow morphed right. us into a full-time job. And that sort of transition <laughs> happened really, um, seamless in a sense. Like we didn't set out to say, let's start a business in this space. Um, we just kind of started doing something because we wanted to find a solution that wasn't there. Um, and, you know, our family has been, you know, we were dedicated caregivers to my grandmother. Um, you know, she passed in December 21, which was, you know, out of pandemic lockdown, mm. but still in that weird um, middle time pre-vaccine. So, it was, you know, right. a, kind of a hybrid in-person Zoom funeral. Um, but it was still that kind of that weird moment. My, my dad was able to go into the care community and, and see her and say goodbye and was able to FaceTime all of us. Um, and so really what we're doing now is, um, really honoring her legacy. Um, you know, as, as one of the most fashionable people I ever knew. Um, uh, and I, she would have been so proud to see, uh, how these pants turned out. Um, so we're, we're excited for where this is going well, and, and what we've done so far. So, you know, that day that she dropped the F-bomb, that really changed everything. It, it really did. And it was in such an unexpected way. You know, it, it really was just like a, right. um, you know, a moment where we were just trying to make life a little better for her um, and realize like, oh, no, like she, she's not in a unique position here. Uh, she's not the only one that struggles with this. Um, you know, we spent so much, you know, I, I spent a whole lot of time visiting her. And so I knew all, all the residents, in, you know, in her neighbors and like, oh, my gosh, all these people would benefit from pants like this. All these caregivers who work here, uh, it would benefit. Uh, um, 
and so uh, you know we're really excited to be on such a kind of a mission driven journey, uh, and so that's why you know we've been um, still working with my grandmother's old care community. Actually, her her executive director is even on our board of advisors still, uh, and has been that's fantastic. Yeah, when we get prototypes, we send them to her, and she tries them out. She'll wear them on her own, uh, which is great. And then she'll have uh, some <laughs> residents try them out, uh, which which is also, of course, really great. And uh, we'll, she'll hand them to her professional caregivers and say, no instructions, just figure out how to use them. Are they easy enough to use? Um, and so it's been um, really uh, exciting um, to be able to stay with that community and, and still work with all the folks over there as well. You know, one of the... I know my listeners of both on Healing Ties and here on the Influencer podcast, they've heard me say this many times, but it, it just continues to hold true. You know, the, the best innovators are people like yourself who have been in the trenches and see the see a need and can figure out how to make that uh, happen. And the legacy that uh, you're creating with Joe and Bella for your grandmother is just, uh, it, it has so much meaning to it. Because there's when you get right down to it, Ben, there's there's no strangers when it comes to caregivers. We all, where, while we may not know each other personally, we understand the stories yep. and we understand where we've been and and how we're trying to help others. That, that's for sure. And I, you know, one of the great things about this job, and you know, I've I've been spending, as you mentioned, a lot of time on the marketing side, and um, that's allowed me to talk to a whole lot of people in this space. Uh, who've been doing things in the mm-hmm. space for a lot longer than I have, um, from professional caregivers, dementia coaches, senior living consultants, uh, ger- social gerontologists, uh, you know, professors of psychology for the aging, um, uh, and, a, and a whole lot of former family caregivers. And um, so many people in the space um, are in it for the right reason. Uh, came into it for the right, right reason. And uh, so many stay in it, even when their own personal caregiving journey is over. And so, um, you know, I think we've got at Joe and Bella, and, you know, my family, we've got, you know, a, you know an interesting uh, story of how we join, but it's far from unique, uh, which I think also makes it just, just as powerful um, that um, so many people who become caregivers to their family you know, when that personal journey is over, um, want to continue contributing in this space. Um, you know, as I mentioned kind of the beginning of our talk, um, no one's really going to be an expert on caregiving until you have to be one. Uh, and usually you become that a few days too late. So true. You know, you've got to usually, you know, most of us are coming in here under, um, you know, circumstances of urgency and, um, I think it's really important for those who finally do collect all of this knowledge and experience to continue sharing it in ways that are easily accessible, um, you know, for people who are um, often going through a life-changing experience for themselves and their family. Right. right. You, know, cause, you know, caregiving happens because of one or two things. You know, an untimely uh, diagnosis or an unfortunate accident, and suddenly you're thrust into this role. And most people, uh, you know, most people aren't well versed in dealing with the social service issues, the legal issues, the medical issues. You're thrown into this, and you know, love love can only get you so far. And uh, uh, being able to tap into a variety of resources and people who have been in the trenches. Is so important. That, that's for sure. And, you know, it's, you know, as you're talking about that, I'm just, I'm just thinking through uh, the, the first moment when my grandparents moved into a care community. It was under the most urgent of circumstances. It was the eve of Christmas Eve when a, um, after my oh, grandmother had my. fallen out of her bed one too many times, even with 24 hour caregiver. Um, and paramedics pretty much said, right. you guys got to stop calling 911. Got to figure something out. And, you know, we um, moved in um, and it was a really tough night because it was um, a skeleton staff. Um, you know, everything's decorated mm-hmm. with holiday cheer and none of us were particularly cheery at the moment. 
Cheerful. You know, it was, and um, uh, we were given a tour uh, by one of one of one of the two staff members who I think were in the building at the time. And uh, while we're getting a tour, um, first my grandfather was not particularly happy to move there. Um, but then we went to the kitchen mm. and he saw bacon's on the menu and then he can have it every day done. So he was it. So he was sold. <laughs> um, that did it for him. That, uh, <laughs> and in, yeah, it kind of proves the point. The best way to through to somebody's heart is through their stomach. Exactly. So. And, you know, while we're on this tour, a, uh, couple who, you know, we, you can tell, li- you know, lived at this community kind of joined the tour and were following us along. And eventually it started mm-hmm. leading the tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was Joe and Bella, uh, who are um, widowed Holocaust survivors who met each other later in life. They met each other at this, uh, at this community, uh, eventually moved into the same room together, um, you know, and remained together until until Joe passed about five, four or five years ago. Um, and they eventually became um, uh, my grandparents' best friends. They ate every meal together. My grandmother was also not particularly excited to move there. Uh, I know she, she looked at me and goes, you expect me to hang out with all these old ladies? You know, she, she was 90. <laughs> um, yeah. um, and uh, Joe yeah. Bella started coming to our, our, you know, our house for all of our uh, major holidays and, and milestones and uh, really became my set of adopted grandparents. Um, and so we're doing this to honor my grandparents, but we're doing this also to honor Joe and Bella and, and all they did for my grandparents. Um, Bella just passed um, just a couple months ago. Uh, she was in her late nineties, uh, so she uh, she had a long, long, vibrant life. Um, but she was able to see the beginnings of Joe and Bella the company, uh, which is really exciting. Oh goodness, what a wonderful story! So there's it just kind of it just kind of proves the point it's through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate on a common cause. And by sharing this wonderful story, it just connects. It not only connects your why, it just gives you the mission to move forward. What uh, <laughs> I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but it's got to be very satisfying. You know, it, it's, it's equally satisfying and terrifying at the same time, because we have a lot of pressure to not screw this opportunity up. Um, and so we've set really right. high expectations for ourselves. Uh, we said, if we're going to really do this, mm-hmm. uh, we got to do it right. Um, we're going to be you know, smart and really thoughtful with how to develop a product, how we're going to present it, um, you know, what we're going to be as a brand, what our tone is going to be. And so, um, you know, it took a lot of, um, you know, for starting any business, of course, it, it takes a whole lot of work, but we felt kind of this extra level of um, emotional pressure um, to mm-hmm. live up to the expectations to fully honor those who have kind of inspired us to do what we're doing. Um, you know, the last thing we want to do is make clothes that are too ugly for my grandma. Uh, you know, so we've got, we right. like, we, we got to do it. Um, and the funny thing is like, as picky as my grandma was, Bella might've been worse. Um, my mom spent, <laughs> I would say a good half decade trying to find Bella a new pair of shoes. Um, and Bella was, mm-hmm. you know, for, for a few of those years, my mom would pick up Bella and they would go to a shoe store. And, you know, she would sit there and really inspect the shoes and um, reject them every time. And eventually my mom would just bring boxes of shoes to, mm-hmm. to, to her apartment to, to show her. And um, she was a hard person to please with clothing and apparel. Uh, so we're, we're keeping that in mind as, as we do this. I'm like, would Bella wear this? Would she like this? Would, would my grandma wear this? The, now we'll know. Yeah, you'll know. You'll, you'll know by that reflection. That's, uh, <laughs> oh goodness. Well, Ben, we could, we could talk for hours and I would love to do that. And maybe we'll, sure. yeah, we should do a few more of these, but, uh, uh, but please let all of our listeners know how they can learn more about Joe and Bella, Care Zips, and, uh, and definitely, yeah, you can, well. um, uh, you know, find all about Joe and Bella at our website, www.joeandbella.com. Uh, if anyone has any like specific questions or they'd like to reach out to me, they can always uh, 
uh, contact me at my email, which is just ben at joeandbella.com. Uh, check out our Instagram. Uh, we got some new photos up there from our, our photo shoot out in LA a few weeks ago, showing off the pants. Uh, our Instagram handle is shop Joe and Bella. Um, a high school couple has the Instagram handle of Joe and Bella. So we, we weren't able to get it. Um, so we, we had to pivot a little <laughs> there, um, which is, which is great. The, those <laughs> darn high schoolers. So. Um, and um, yeah, in terms of you know my background, um, you know, I'm, uh, in, the, in the rest of the company, Joe and Bella company for the most part is based, uh, here in Chicago. Um, uh, most of us are in the suburbs. I'm, I'm, I live in the city with, uh, my partner, Nate and our golden retriever, Maisie. Um, and, uh, there yeah, we go yeah. over mm-hmm. here right next to me. It was a little too humid out there for her today. So she's, uh, exhausted after her 20 minute walk. Um, I know Chicago well. Oh, there being you go. from St. Louis, uh, lots of trips to Chicago. Yeah, yeah. But uh, goodness, Ben, with the great work that you're doing and the products at uh, Joe and Bella, what you're creating, you are certainly a WC influencer. And I can't thank of course, you enough. Thank for you. This has been today. great. Appreciate it. <laughs>